Hi everybody, welcome back. It's finally time to finish that multi-threaded web server we've been working on. This is the third video on this topic. If you haven't seen the first two, I suggest that you watch them first. I'll link to both in the description, but of course I leave that up to you. So last time we added a thread pool to our server to make sure that if we get tons and tons of requests coming in, that that doesn't result in millions and millions of threads being produced, which would cause our server's performance to grind to a halt. And our thread pool really is just a bunch of threads that are sitting there watching a work queue and that queue is where we put stuff that comes in. So as a connection comes in, we stick it on the work queue. And then when there's an available thread, that thread will then grab that connection or whatever. It, it doesn't have to be a connection, but in our case, it was a connection. It can be any piece of work that you want a thread to work on. It can grab it off the queue and then it can go work on it. So where we left off last time, each thread was constantly checking the queue to see if there was new work to be done. And that's the problem that we want to sort out today. Because having your threads check all the time isn't really great because it means that our server uses up all the available CPU cycles that the machine has, even when there are no connections coming in, and that's definitely not something that we want. So today I want to talk about how to fix this. Now, one obvious option that at least one of you suggested in the comments of the last video was to simply add a sleep. And basically, anytime we try to get work from the queue and we don't find any, then just sleep. And for illustration's sake, I will sleep for a second. You could, of course, sleep for less too, but this will illustrate the point clearly. And we compile our server and we run it. And now you notice when I send it connections, these connections are taking a little bit slower than we saw before. They're taking somewhere between what they were taking before and a second. And the reason is, is that often when these connections come in, they have to wait for one of these threads to finally wake up to actually get the job done. This of course is because when the new work comes in, all of my threads are sleeping. And so we have to wait for up to a second for one of our threads to wake up and handle the connection. Sometimes it's gonna be fast if a thread just happened to wake up. Sometimes it's gonna be rather slow. And yes, if you sleep for less time, your server will be more responsive. But the problem here is that the more responsive you make it, the more CPU cycles are going to be consumed. And so there's this trade-off between how much CPU overhead you want and how responsive your server you want. And I just don't find adding sleeps to be a particularly satisfying solution to this problem. So I'm gonna remove that sleep. Now instead, I'm going to use a condition variable. Now, just to be clear, I have never been crazy about the name condition variable because students always get thinking that it has something to do with an if statement or some kind of logical condition, and it doesn't. All a condition variable does is allows threads to wait for some event to occur, a condition. So when those threads aren't needed, they can just be suspended, and then they're going to jump into action when the time comes for them to actually do something, which it sounds familiar because that's exactly what we need to happen in our web server. Specifically, you can do two things with a condition variable. A thread can wait on it. That means that the thread will wait, not doing anything, until another thread calls signal. That's the second thing that you can do with the condition variable. You can signal it. The waiting thread is going to wait until another thread calls signal on that condition variable. Okay, so let's add this to our little server. Before any thread tries to take work off the queue, let's just call pthread cund wait. That's the pthread's version of wait, waiting on a condition variable, which will make the thread wait until it's signaled. Then up where we add work to the queue, up here where we're calling NQ, we're just going to call signal. And this is going to let one of the threads that's currently waiting no longer be waiting. It's gonna stop waiting and it'll be able to jump back in. Now, those of you that haven't seen condition variables before might be wondering why I pass in the mutex into wait. And the reason is the condition variables are designed to work closely with mutex locks. When the thread's suspended, it also releases the lock. And if I didn't, no other threads could grab the lock to put work on the queue and would be stuck. So one thread would have the lock and then nobody else would actually be able to access the queue because they'd be trying to grab the lock and they wouldn't be able to. So when we call wait, when a thread calls wait, it waits, but it also releases the lock and that allows other threads to be able to access that critical section. It allows other threads to be able to put work on the queue. And then when it's time to stop waiting, they'll reacquire the lock before wait returns. I hope that's not too confusing, but that's the way condition very work. Okay, so let's see how this changes things. So we compile our server and we run it and now if I run top like I did before, you'll notice that the server is no longer consuming all the CPU cycles. In fact, it doesn't even show up here on the top near the top of the list. Because all of its threads are suspended just waiting for some work to come in. So these suspended threads, they're not using any CPU and now when a connection comes in, it's once again handled very quickly, which is really nice, but we're not quite there yet because our server still has an issue and to see it, I need to send a lot of connections. So I'm going to change the script, the client script that I've been using and we're gonna send 150 connections all at once. 
and when I run it, then you notice that it starts off okay, but then it gets stuck. So what's going on here? It's pretty simple. Our server is just too simplistic. So our threads are waiting each time through the loop, and our main thread is signaling each time a new connection comes in. But when a lot of connections comes in, we learn something about condition variables, and that is that they are stateless. What that means is that when I call wait, my thread waits. It doesn't care how many times signal was called before it, it waits. Now when a lot of connections arrive and are added to the queue, signal is called, but let's say that the threads aren't keeping up. At some point there is no new work added to the queue, so signal isn't getting called anymore. But there's a bunch of work still on the queue, and my worker threads finish their tasks, and they call wait, and they wait. Even though there is a ton of work to be done, they won't grab any more work until another connection arrives and a thread calls signal. Now this is a problem, but it's easily sorted out. So to fix this, I'm just going to first call DQ, and if it returns null, then I will call wait on my condition variable. Okay, now the threads will only wait if they can't get work from the queue. That's the whole point. So now we no longer get into this trouble. So now I can compile it and run it, and now we get through all of our connections. And we have a working multi-threaded server that uses a thread pool that doesn't allow us to pile up a million threads, and it doesn't use all of our CPU cycles while waiting for new connections to come in. And this last part we got by using condition variables. Now this is where I'm going to end my multi-threaded server example, but I just want to be clear, this server is not without its issues. It still has some ways that we could improve it, and we'll work on that in future videos. One of this server's issues are that it's still vulnerable to a particular kind of denial of service attack. So let's say that a client connects to this server, and this client takes a long time to send its message. The server's not working very hard because data is coming in very slowly, but one of the threads of my thread pool is going to be waiting and waiting and waiting and just trying to get the data off this connection. Now let's say that I create a bunch of these really slow connections. They are now going to occupy all of the threads in my thread pool and my server now is occupied with these really slow, long connections and it can't handle anybody else. And so if I decide to be really nasty, I could just bring this server to its knees by sending it a bunch of really long, slow connections. And there are some ways that I could handle this, specifically using event-driven models and asynchronous I.O. and I am going to get to those in future videos, but not today, because that's all the time I have for today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to make sure you don't miss any future videos, and until the next video, I'll see you later.